welcome. My name is Donna from AxeRatech.com, helping you go from the classroom to the extra room with ease. Just want to say a big thank you for 100 subscribers. We hit that, I think, a couple of days ago or so. So thank you so much for joining on, and I can't wait to bring you guys more content. Today, as you can see by the title, I'm actually going to be doing a video um, on different tips and pointers, things that I did when I had to study for my imaging examinations, as well as, you know, normal classes, extra physics, that kind of thing. So let's get into that. I'm in need of an X-ray. One of the things that I always did was write a lot of notes in class. Sometimes people will be watching me and saying, but like, why are you writing so much? Or like, you know, I was one of them, those students who just wrote, 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 writes everything the lecturer said, and it paid off in the end. Because sometimes they do give a lot of great gems, a lot of nice tips and pointers, little things they might throw in there that you might recall later on. But those things definitely help because I was able to look back on it and say, oh yeah, I remember when they mentioned this little tip on how to figure out this exposure or how to work out this or how to um, remember or recall this so that really helped me personally so I definitely recommend it you may not be someone that likes to write a lot but it would actually come in handy if you do so this next point is a little straightforward not a little very straightforward you need to keep organized when you're writing your notes I tend to write really messy. I don't have the best handwriting. I like to scribble a lot when I write because my mind is going faster than my hands can go. So I don't even fold my letters good. But when I do write properly, I'm able to study and it makes it so much easier to recall the information because I actually understood what I wrote. There will be times where if I might take down a quick note and my handwriting is super messy, I might go back later and then, you know, fix up whatever and rewrite it so that I can have it in a way that will make me you know, recall the information a bit easier. So I definitely recommend doing that, keeping your work organized, color coded, you can use markers, color pencils, colored pens, whatever it is, so that you can categorize your work well and section it off really neatly so it's easy when you're studying. This next point is something that I did all the time. I always made use of mnemonics. You know, when you have like, for example, the wrist bones, some lovers try positions that they can't handle, but I actually made up my own mnemonics for different study things. So there would be times where I need to recall something and I would literally just like give it my own mnemonic or another point, which is kind of piggybacking off at this point, is to actually give it your own abbreviation. So I'll have a picture here, I actually wrote it down. This is just a quick example, right? If you're learning something that requires steps or you're doing something that there's also a lot of characteristics and you can't remember all, they give each main word of the characteristic a letter. So for my example, the, the abbreviation is OPIT, right? So O and this, these are the steps for the workflow, the general workflow for film radiography. O would be your order entry. P will be your performing the examination. Next one will be processing the film, and then we go on. So that's just how that works, right? You just go on and on, and each major word within an, uh, an explanation, or each major word within a phrase is what you would use in order to remember it at the end. And I did this from the beginning of my degree towards the end. And even though it may not be something like the abbreviation, you may not remember it, like till thy kingdom come, but you will definitely be able to recall it for the exam and over time, you'll be remembering these things, just probably not with the abbreviation, but it really does help. My next point is a point that I think I actually told you all already. Practice your positioning, practice or think about different exposure techniques that you would use on your family, your friend, I don't know, your classmates, whoever it is, right? Practice, practice, practice. Like look at the positioning of our wrist x-ray, like do things that are easily accessible, but like if you have any downtime on site, you could, and you have a classmate that is, you could practice with them. So that's way you would be able to apply it. So when you have a real patient to do, it comes way easier. So this last step is actually when it comes to learning your pathology and learning x-rays like critique your x-rays online. Look up online, see the different pathologies so that way whenever it deviates from the normal, you'll know what you're looking out for, especially now as students aren't really on site and would need the extra practice due to COVID restrictions. So that's it for this video. I hope that it was helpful and I will see you all in the next one.